I step outside for a smoke, quick while I still can, and I see that there's a little bag of religious pamphlets and shit hanging off my door handle. And I'm kind of pissed just because I don't like having to scrape religious barnacles off my house, but I'm even more pissed because I was inside the goddamn house when they left it. They didn't bother to knock and try to sell me their Jesus face to face. They just left a bag of chick track bullshit there and ran. And I've been looking forward to the door to door evangelist since I moved here. But yet again, they took the coward's way out and just left a bag of shit on my porch without the decency to at least set it on fire. So I'm looking through it because it's usually good for a laugh. But the main pamphlet was good for a lot more than that. On the front, it shows a tree line road with the words how to know you're going to heaven printed across it. And, and, and this is probably the most common form of religious pamphlet, right? They open up with that ridiculous eternal happy versus eternal sad stakes that they've set up. And then they promise you a nice, easy means to ensure the former. So the beginning's usually some variation on how to make sure you're not going to have your flesh burned off by demons for eternity for disagreeing with me. But then on the inside, it accidentally disproves intelligent design by reminding us that their dumbass God can't even intelligently design a book. I mean, look, if you take Christianity at face value, the very most important thing one can take away from the Bible is the means to salvation, right? If it serves no other function, at the very least, you should walk away from that book with a clear idea of the steps you need to take in order to get to heaven and avoid hell. But no sooner have you opened up the pamphlet than you're confronted by the fact that God very much neglected to do that, right? Because they can't exactly quote from the part of the Bible that tells you how to get to heaven. That part doesn't exist. Instead, they have to cherry pick a bunch of unrelated sentences and build their case around it with theological push pins and yarn. For example, step one of five is know that you have sinned. So where do they go to make the case for that? Do they go to the Bible that says the first step to getting to heaven is to acknowledge your sins? No, because that part doesn't exist. Do they go to the part that at least says unimportant aspect of getting to heaven is having acknowledged your sin? Nope, still doesn't exist. Instead, they slap together two non-consecutive sentences from Romans to get as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So despite having a book with three quarters of a million words plus, they cannot find a single sentence that succinctly makes the point that they believe is the first step in ensuring eternal paradise. In fact, even when they're allowed to smush two disparate sentences together, they can't make that point with them. Right. There's nothing in that sentence about acknowledging those sins or about that being foundational to punching my heaven ticket. It's just a couple spots in Romans where Paul's like, yeah, I said you guys suck, but everybody sucks. That's it. And to underscore that, by the way, the pamphleteer felt the need to add several sentences of their own at the bottom to explain what the fuck that had to do with getting to heaven. But even if the words matched the point they were trying to make, it would still be ridiculous. You mean to tell me that the very first step in my salvation, the first thing that I have to know as preamble to everything else in your religion is presented without fanfare in the 45th book out of 66, right? God decided to put all the genealogies up front, but tuck step one and how to get to heaven into two poorly worded sentences on page 1430. Now, for step two in the process, know that God says there is a price owed because of sin. We jump all the way ahead to Revelations to cherry pick that bit about whoremongers, murderers, sorcerers, and liars all having their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which all by itself is a pretty shitty passage to have to use, right? In a single sentence, it equally condemns murderers, people who pay for sex, fictional beings, right? Like a D&D &D character type and people who tell you that those pants don't make your ass look big. All equivalent actions according to this authority. But then we get to step three, which is know that Jesus paid that price for you. And to justify that one, they go back to Romans. So <laughs> God intended you to read this thing like a goddamn pick a path adventure what are you supposed to read from the outside in you're supposed to read all the passages from shortest to longest maybe i mean we wouldn't accept this kind of bullshit in a book on how to bake cookies would we if the first two-thirds of the book never even mentioned cookies and the actual steps were vaguely worded in random parts of the appendix we would conclude that this was a shitty cookbook and yet christians are willing to present this as the very most important subject as addressed by the very most perfect book as inspired by the very most perfect being. But their good book is a long ways from perfect. Hell, it's a long ways from good. But that should come as no surprise.
Right. Like if a glance at the politics of America today teaches you only one thing, it's going to be that Christians have a pretty fucked up definition of good.